Hi, my name is Stuart Knumont. I'm a researcher at the Stockholm Resilience Centre and today I want to talk about making marine protected areas work, or particularly making sure that they're not just drawings on a map. This is part of an international collaboration from researchers all over the world. As the world's population has increased, the pressure on the coastal environment, and particularly the coastal reefs, has also increased. And one of the tools to help try to manage that pressure is marine protected areas where fishing is reduced or restricted. The question that we need to have is, is this going to be sufficient protection? We are, at the moment we only have 2.8% of the ocean is, is officially protected and they want to have 10% by 2020. However, is just an area statement any use? Do we need more? Have we got to think about this a lot more than just an, uh, the amount of area? And we feel that we do. We went out and we surveyed all of those areas and we looked at all the fish. We looked at biomass of the large fish and the small fish and also the species richness of the large fish and small fish. And we also kept a good view on what was happening with the sharks, the gropers, jacks and the damselfish. We also looked at the marine protected areas. We looked at 87 of these reserves. We looked at what type of fishing happens there, whether it's no take or whether you're allowed some fishing. We looked at the enforcement. How well was it being governed? <clears throat> Were people being forced to not uh, to not fish, to not break the rules. Very importantly, we wanted to know how long it had been established, how old was the reserve, uh, and we wanted to know how large the reserve was in, in kilometres square. Another fifth feature is its isolation. We wanted to look at each of the reserves and see if, in fact, they were isolated by, say, a sandy area or a deep water, which stopped the fish from moving within the reserve and out of the reserve. So, in general, we can say that there's a, for each of these reserves, there's a, a no-take, enforced, old, large, isolated, essentially what we're calling the OLI features. These make up reserves that are very effective. They work. And this is some of the results that we found when we looked at all those fish counts. We found that the biomass of all the fish, for the first areas that only have a couple of different of those neoli features, so it might be that they only have, um, say for instance, uh, some size, or they might have um, some enforcement. If they only have two or three of these, they were no more effective than areas outside. And in fact, 57% of the reserves that we looked at were no more effective than the fished areas next door. But, and this is the good news, as soon as the number of these neoli features increases, three, four and five, we see a dramatic in increase. So the increase for biomass, particularly biomass for the large fish, the ones that are being hunted, it's a bit obvious really, but the dramatic increase wasn't so obvious that we're seeing uh, five times as much fish uh, in these reserves. We're also seeing twice as many species in these reserves for the reserves that have four to five features. Key to our findings is that it was basically any of those five, but our neoli has been set up so that you can think about the first couple, the most important, that is whether they're no-take and whether they're enforced. So most reserves can change this very easily. And that's what we hope to promote, is that reserves can be made more effective uh, in the future to help our conservation of the marine environment. Thank you.